what was happening to Brando's body as he was turning into a giant insect. What small details can we find in his new anatomy? I'll answer these questions and more about David Cronenberg's film The Fly in this video. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. A charismatic but quirky young scientist, who almost got his Nobel Prize at just 20 years old, has been working on a new revolutionary scientific project for the past six years and almost never leaves his home. As his friend Veronica, a journalist, points out, he lost some of his communication skills, but it didn't make him less charismatic. Seth Brundle's work was supposed to revolutionize transportation and change our view on borders and limits, space and time, if only it were ever revealed to the public. It was a project on teleportation. For a fraction of a second, the object ceases to exist and becomes a cluster of atoms, which travel through the air until they reach their destination. Reaching their destination, they once again become that very object. This is how the process of teleportation was described in the original 1958 film of the same name. Being a sensation-hungry journalist, Veronica intends to tell the world of Brundle's achievements, but he persuades her to wait until his invention is fully functional. For now, his teleports can successfully disintegrate and reintegrate inanimate objects. What is missing is a successful and, more importantly, safe way to teleport a living creature. Soon, however, this becomes possible and a man will be teleported, along with a fly that accidentally got into the chamber. Not all things go according to plan. So Brundle suggests that Veronica should film some documentary footage of his experiments, which are currently at animal teleportation stage. The process of teleporting organic matter is not yet streamlined, and the poor baboon is literally turned inside out, and even his jaws are pointing in different directions. After some alone time with Veronica, Brundle tries teleporting meat as an experiment and concludes that when teleporting organic matter, the computer doesn't reconstruct it. Instead, it creates its own interpretation of organic matter, sometimes a pretty twisted one. It's as if the computer reimagines Flash. It can't understand the way it works. So what Brundle needs to do is to teach it. Typing away at the keyboard, Brundle is soon successful. The next baboon survives the experiment seemingly with no deviations. At the very least, teleportation is not how this animal dies. Just like all means of transport, teleports are not supposed to be used under influence. It is a safety measure that Brundle himself ignores, suddenly deciding to try teleporting a human for the first time ever. He's going to teleport himself. However, his inebriated state is not the main issue in this experiment. The sterility of the teleport is compromised by a measly domestic fly. It was bound to happen eventually, as Brundle's lab is right next to his kitchen. Only after several days of irreversible, seemingly degenerative metamorphoses that will eventually turn Brundle into a giant insect, the scientist will realize that he was not alone in the telepod. As a result, Object 1 and Object 2 underwent genetic fusion and became a Brundle fly. The computer had no instructions on what to do in such situations, so we decided that fusion is the most feasible course of action. It's almost as if Brundle's computer had some sort of a twisted sense of humor. In the original film that came out in 1958, the scientist and the fly exchanged their arms and heads. After the transformation, the human mind degraded and became the mind of a fly, whereas the fly with a scientist's head eventually learned to think and talk like a human. The police officer will never forget the cries of help coming from the fly tangled in a spider web. You can find some interviews online, mostly with biologists, who commented on the way the fly approaches scientific matters, and if such a genetic man-fly cocktail is even possible. They seem to be of the opinion that, since flies and humans are genetically close to each other, there will be no transformation into a giant insect. Specific properties of flies could cause local changes to the matter, such as the formation of chitin and maybe even immunity to certain diseases. So when Brundle asked the computer if he consumed the fly genetically, it's somewhat scientific. But in Cronenberg's film, no one cares about scientific. Just like us. Seth Brundle's experiments are just a prelude to a gradual, repulsive metamorphosis of a man into something else entirely. A Brundle fly. In Cronenberg's interpretation, it's like a retrovirus, which inserted itself into the host's genome and started self-replicating. The first stage of his transformation is feeling like a brand new being, a superhuman who was purified on a molecular level, but whose behavior is rapidly becoming antisocial and aggressive. They say that flies can lift one and a half times their weight. If we apply this to a human, we can say that Brundle becomes strong, but not super strong, and gains heightened reflexes. Just like an insect, Brundle expends a lot of energy, which he replenishes by eating lots of fast carbs. 
And of course, he has the urge to procreate. But to create his offspring, he not only resorts to traditional methods, but also insists that the partner should undergo teleportation, becoming as revamped as he is. Another peculiar thing is that apart from the urge to mate, Brundle can also be attracted to humans because of all the sweat and oils that our bodies produce. That's why regular flies are so annoying and tend to stick around and pester us. Also body warmth. Flies are cold-blooded and do not thermoregulate. But not all of Brundle's quirks are of an insect at this stage. He says that he doesn't need to sleep, but in reality the flies do need to sleep. Later Brundle will claim that insects are ruthless and merciless. Which is the case, but not really for flies. They're not very aggressive, even when they compete for a partner to mate with. But they are pesky, I'll give them that. Humans are however aggressive, and that's already enough. At this stage, Brundle's body grows hairs, which are typical for insects. They perform a sensory function, meaning that they help their owner adapt to changes in the environment more quickly. They emerge from the cuts on Brundle's back, which he got earlier in the movie. And there's a certain logic to that. Brundle's skin is not part of the Brundle fly's outer protective layer. Any new protective layer is formed under the skin. That's where the hairs come from. His former skin is now more of a chrysalis, in which the real Brundle fly is developing and which will later on be shed. All of the events leading up to the final transformation are just steps in a twisted process of pupation, typical for flies in nature. Brundle's old skin is also dying off. Before the final transformation, you can already see parts of dead skin on his body, and in some places the chitin of the final Brundle fly is already visible. In its initial stages, his skin decay looks like a horrific infection, abscesses, blisters and all the other nasty stuff. Brundle himself describes his transformation as cellular chaos and evolution. In one of the scenes, that wound on his back becomes infected. Maybe because Brundle ignored Veronica's advice and didn't disinfect it. At first, I thought that what we see is Brundle's new blood, a liquid closer to hemolymph, which is the insect's colorless or yellowish blood. It's not red because it has no erythrocytes and doesn't take part in gases exchange. The insects have no lungs. They breathe either through their whole body or through a branching system of tracheas. However, the Brundle fly's blood is red meaning that his respiratory system is closer to that of a human. For such a big creature, it's way more practical to have lungs. You can see until the very last moment that the Brundlefly breathes like an ordinary human being. It's a hybrid after all. The substance that Brundle pushes out of his fingers as he removes his fingernails, and the one that you see in the arm wrestling episode, may be the sticky substance that flies secrete to be able to cling to surfaces. Here you can even see the suction cups on his hands. Veronica sees him doing this in one of the days when his mental changes become more obvious and the pointer finger and the middle finger on his right hands have already fused together. He also shows Veronica some horrific growth on his left side. From a scene which was cut from the final film, we can learn that this growth is an underdeveloped new limb, which an already insane Brundle will tear off from his own body. This episode once again shows us how chaotic the scientist's transformation is. It's part of a deleted scene where he tried to fuse a baboon and a cat together. In the episode where he was crawling on the ceiling, Brundle asks Veronica to chronicle how he eats his food. He still has teeth, but he can't digest solid foods anymore. However, he's discovered that just like flies, he can dissolve it with the help of his digestive ferments. In a very disturbing scene, he uses this to mutilate Stathis, Veronica's ex. In some other deleted scenes, we can see Brundle consume the dissolved flesh through an already formed proboscis. In the final cut of the film, you can only see that he ate something. In the episode where his teeth fall out, we can see that his fingers have chaotically fused together, and for some reason, new rudimentary pinky fingers grew. They grew on his feet as well. Up until the very last moment, Brundle tries to find a way to restore his humanity, and comes to a conclusion that the best option is to lower the percentage of the fly's genes in his own, as he can't get rid of it entirely. For this, he must undergo fusion with one or more other people. Putting his teeth next to other parts of the body that fell off, he notices Veronica, who tried but failed to tell him that she is pregnant with their child. Gathering what's left of his will and humanity, Brundle decides to let Veronica go. However, overhearing about her pregnancy and plans to have an abortion, his ruthless insect sight takes over, and he drags the pregnant Veronica into the teleport to fuse with her and become the perfect organism. This is where the final stage of the Brundle fly's transformation takes place. He loses his mandible, his legs break and form an additional joint, a new rudimentary limb emerges from his side, the pair to which he tore off earlier. 
After he sheds his old skin, what we see is a disproportionate creature with an underdeveloped left arm, an asymmetrical head, and some vestiges of a human mandible. Its left leg looks like an ugly interpretation of a mammal's leg, and the right looks more like a fly's leg. The creature is clumsy and barely functional, and is a walking illustration of the chaos of evolution. The Brundle fly's plan failed, and this horrendous hybrid turned out to be its pinnacle. Still alive, the Brundle fly with his emotions and pain shown with the help of animatronic eyes begs to end his life and shoot him. There's still some of that charismatic, quirky young scientist left in him. One way or another, the fly is not the story of a man turning into a monster. It is a story of how important it is to double-check everything before conducting an experiment. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Also, leave a comment down below and share this video with your friends. Bye!